so in this sessions of video we are going to learn about uh, the new generations Vistron motherboard power savings okay so see the uh, there are different manufacturers of the motherboard like the Compel then Quanta then Vistron then LCFC and each of this uh, manufacturers have the different power sequences okay so here we are going to learn about the Vistron power sequence Vistron motherboard how to identify the Vistron motherboard the Vistron motherboard you can identify with the five digits number like one two three four five dash one or uh, uh, th these are five digits and then dash one or dash two like that the compel motherboard how have we identified the compel motherboard compel motherboard start from la number and then quanta motherboard number start from da but the Vistron motherboard start from the five digits and then dash one or dash two like that so so we'll see how the things are work in the Vistron motherboard so here is my cpu uh, whether it is uh, generation 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, whichever it may be, doesn't matter. Uh, so here is a CPU, then here is a SIO, and uh, here is my BIOS, and then here is my adapter inputs, okay. And these are the different, different power uh, uh, buck converters. So here is a 3.3 volt and 5 volt buck converter, here is a DDR3L buck converter, here is a 1.5 volt buck converter, then the 1.05 volt buck converter, and then the final will be the CPU core volt buck converter. So these are the different different buck converter. Work on uh, work on accordingly. Uh, they uh, given enable signal, and uh, this is my power input adapter power inputs, and this is my volt in section. Volt in section means basically power uh, adapter inputs and battery inputs. We will this is called the battery charging section okay so the first when we connect the adapter to the dc uh, jack then what happen is this 19 volt pass here and reach to here here is my current sensing register so the 19 volt pass here and given input to this all buck converter so these are the all buck converters received the 19 volt here the 3.3 volt and 5 volt section receive a 19 volt then ddr3l receive the 19 volt 1.5 volt 1.05 volt and the cpu core get input the 19 volt okay after that uh, step number uh, two they, they all get the 19 volt then this here the sio uh, in normally uh, in the Viston motherboard uh, neoton uh, the sio uses normally neoton manufacturer there are different manufacturer of the sio like the uh, it then uh, Newton and then SMSC, okay, ENE. So these are the major manufacturer of the SR. But normally, I, I see in this uh, Vistron motherboard, uh, Newton is a is a, is a use for the SIO, okay. So either it is a programmable or not programmable. The SIO used by the Newton. So SIO uh, just uh, uh, just this uh, SIO needs a 3.3 volt. So once uh, this uh, uh, this uh, adapter input voltage come across this current sensing resistor, entered into the three volt and five volt section, which generate linear voltage called the LDO voltage, or it's called the linear voltage, and it's called the VRG3 voltage regulator three. Okay, and this voltage regulator three uh, generate a three volt, and this three volt is given to the SIO VCC pin or this supply pin or standby pin. Once this SIO get the power, that is a 3 volt, then SIO start functioning. But before that, you need one more signal and that signal is called EC reset. So here the EC reset is called the invariant controller reset. It's a basically a delay signal generate uh, by the RC circuit given to the SIO to reset the, to reset the SIO. Okay. So step number, uh, uh, step number 1 is the SIO get the reset, then you get a 3 volt. You get an AC in signal, it's called an adapter current in signal. It's sent by battery charging section, uh, means that the adapter voltage is present. Okay, so you get a, a 3 volt, and then of course, the lead switch the 3 volt. So these are the input signals given to the SIO. Okay, after uh, all this uh, signal uh, uh, received by the SIO, then the SIO generate one signal, and that signal is called 
S5 enable and this signal is come before the power on button press. We are not yet uh, press the power button. So at step number four, uh, SIO generate uh, one signal. So I send the output. See, all these are the input to the SS. Power is an input, AC is an input, EC reset is an input, then the thermal trip is an input, or the lead sensor is an input. So these are the input to the SIO. But uh, SY enable is the output signal generated by the SIO if we get all the input parameter perfectly. After that, uh, this SY enable signal generate and this signal is given to this 3 volt and 5 volt buck converter. So, in this 3 volt and 5 volt buck converter, there are total 4 sections. There are 2 linear regulator and 2 buck converter. The linear regulator start himself is no need any enable signal, but the buck converter need an enable signal and and this enable signal generated by the SIO. And if SIO not generate this S5 enable signal before power on button press, that means the SIO is probably bad. SIO is very faulty. So you have to replace the SIO. Okay. So once SIO re receive this signal, then after what happen is the 3 volt and 5 volt signal will be generated. Okay. This is called a 3.3 always and 5 volt always. These are the both voltage will be generated. And this 3 volt is given to the CPU. Here is a CPU. It's called VCC DSW. So, so the CPU get this uh, uh, 3 volt signal. Then CPU, CPU, the RTC section start. Then there is a RTC crystal is here, which is a 32.7 kilohertz RTC reset, RTC reset, reset, and then the RTC clock will be generated. Then what happened is uh, it's a, a RTC. This is a CPU generate RTC clock, and that is called a sys clock. And this is clock is given to the SIO that is called a 32.7 kilo frequency. But before that, SIO generate one more, one more signal that is called the RSM RST. Okay, at step number six. Normally in other laptop like in the Compel or in the Quantum mm -hmm. motherboard, you can uh, you can see uh, this RSM RST signal. Uh, generate after the power button press. But in the Vistron motherboard, this RSM RST signal generate before power on button press. Okay, so just remember this uh, uh, point. This point is very important. So in Vistron motherboard, the RSM RST generate first before power on button press. And the rest of the all the motherboard, like whether it is LCFC, whether it is uh, Compil, or whether it is Quanta, the RSM RST signal generate after power on button press okay so this rsm rst 3 volt will be generated and this 3 volt is given to the cpu and then after cpu and thus sio goes in standby mode now they are wait for the power on button press so here is a power on button it's called the kbc power button or on off switch so these are the name for the power button so there will be 3 volt at the power button but when user press that uh, power button, then that, that 3 volt goes to the 0 and when they release that power button, it goes back to 3 volt. That means uh, at step number 7 on the power button, you will find 303 pulse when we press the power button. That, that pulse should be generated. So once this SIO receives this pulse, the 303 pulse, then what the SIO do is he generate one signal that is called a PM power button. PM. PM means the post power button. See here are the two power button. One power button is the input power button which user press and this signal input to the SIO and this is the output signal and that generated by the SIO and this signal is sent to the CPU. It's called a PM power button. Sometimes this signal is called the DNB power on PM power button or PBTN. Just remember these are the uh, three names of this signal. So there also the 303 pulse will be generated after step number 7 is completed. So this PM power button is signal given to the CPU. Now here in the CPU, this CPU is called the SOC. SOC stands for system on chip. That means in the CPU, the PCH and uh, the CPU is a combined into the single chips. So that is why it's called a CPU. So now in the CPU, the PCH also included. So this signal is given to the PCH actually. So this PM power button goes to the PCH and when the PCH received this signal indicating that the user pressed the power button. Now PCH has to reply to the 
SIO. Okay, so he generate the two signal and those two signal names are SLP underscore S3 and SLP underscore S4. So this signal omit by who? CPU. Okay, before power on button press, the both signals should be 0, 0 volt. But after PM power button goes to the CPU, then CPU turn both the 0 volt into the 3 volt. So you have to check this both the signal SLP S3 and SLP S4 and then this signal given to the C uh, given to the SIO generated by the CPU and now if you find that if the both signals are not coming uh, uh, CPU is not generating the signal then what you have to do is you have to check VCC DSW that is 3 volt you have to check DPW ROK that is a 3 volt you have to check RTC VCC RTC clock then you have to check this uh, crystal that is a 32.7 kilo volt. and if all the input signals are proper is given to the cpu but still cpu is not generating the slp s3 and slp s4 in that case the cpu may be faulty so you have to uh, you have to replace the cpu okay so after slp3 and slp s4 signal generated by the cpu then both the signal are uh, are going to turn on the different different buck converter so here the different different buck converter here is your ddr 3l ram if it is a here is the ddr 4 ram then the voltage will be 1.2 okay but here i mention our ddr 3l ram so that ddr 3l ram require a how much 1.35 volt and if it is a ddr 4 then the 1.2 so once this slp is 3 and slp s4 signal generate this slp s4 signal going to the SIO simultaneously the same signal is going to the going to the turn on this buck converter this DDR 3L buck converter so SLP underscore S4 is given enable to this DDR 3L supply okay so once you get the enable signal then what happen is this SL or DDR 3L uh, buck converter turn on 1.35 voltage that is a DDR uh, DDR 3L and then 0.67 voltage the both voltage will be generated and then slp s3 signal generated by the cpu uh, that that signal coming here also is given to the 1.5 volt buck converter which generate 1.5 volt and is given to the 1.05 voltage that is a core voltage for the pch is turn on the 1.05 voltage now our all voltage are turned on our our 3.35 then 1.35, then 1.5, 1.05, 0 0.67, 0 all voltages are generated. And then what happened is this signal, uh, the power, they, they're all signal generate one power good signal and that power good signal is called run power OK. Now this run power OK, uh, turn on this both the supply and generate some delay and this signal is given to the CPU and that signal is called VCCST power good. Now, if the CPU received the VCCST power good, that means 3.35, uh, then all DDR, DDR supply, and then all the PCS supply like 1.5 or 1.8, and then 1.05, that all voltage has turned on, except the CPU core. CPU core is not yet turned on. So, after that, once the CPU received the signal, then CPU itself generate VR on signal after receive this VCCST underscore power good. So at step number 50, 15, the CPU generate this VR on signal and is going to turn on the CPU core supply at step number, step number 16. And the CPU core will take the VRM, CPU core section sometimes called the VRM section also. Then the CPU core voltage is approximately one volt and current somewhere around more than 20 ampere current at step number 16 uh, the cpu core voltage is turned on and this core voltage is given to the cpu once the cpu core voltage is turned on cpu uh, vrm section will generate one power good signal is called imvp power good here is a step number 17 imvp power good imvp power good means means the cpu core voltage is steady the cpu core voltage is perfect and that voltage is given to the CPU that means now all my powers are okay. The IMPP power that means because already all the 3.35 and 
RAM voltage and the PCH voltage and now the CPU core voltage also turn on. So all voltages are there. Now the CPU uh, now then then after the CPU will receive this signal is called the system power OK from the SIO. Here the system power OK means all the system supplies are OK. The, all powers are ready to work. OK, that's the meaning of the signal. Now, if you check the signal system power OK, that means the all power rails are OK. And after that, step number 18, once system uh, CPU receive the system power OK, at step number 18, CPU generate this signal is called the PLT reset. PLT reset stands for the platform reset, where CPU generate this reset signal at step number 18 and reset the entire motherboard. So once you check this signal, that means CPU all voltages are OK and generate the reset signal. OK, this is the final reset signal. Reset the entire motherboard, like uh, whatever there in the audio network, he, he reset himself and uh, Wi-Fi, everything will be resetted at step number 18. And then after RAM, DDR RAM will be reset. And then at step number 20, CPU start reading the bias. Okay. So bias number one is a chip select pin, bias two number is a read pin. At step number 20, CPU start accessing the bias by static reading. So friend, in this way, we strong motherboard power sequence work. So if you have a motherboard, uh, normally which is used in a Dell motherboard, the Vistron motherboard and which is not going to turn on and then you have to simply follow this step one after another. So thank you very much.